proper glasses on then. Good uh, evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 424. Each week um, we meet here to review the uh, questions and uh, answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have um, Micah fischer Kirchner. Um, Micah is um, a uh, Vice President, is it Vice President of, of Turn River Capital? No? Yeah, just VP, it's fine. VP? Uh, it turned of out. SEO, of SEO. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Micah, I, I got it now. Um, and um, he resides uh, in California, on the west coast of the USA. Um, David Rosam is um, uh, a leading internet marketer. He's based in uh, West Sussex, uh, in the sunny coast of uh, the UK. Uh, you can find David at... Um, uh, what is it? DavidRosen.com. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tim <laughs> is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's uh, based about 100 miles uh, north of uh, David. Uh, he's uh, in Corby. Um, he's CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. And he's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he resides in Wimbledon, um, about, about um, 60 k's from uh, David, about 100 k's from uh, Tim. Um, should we draw a map? <laughs> we should draw a map. <laughs> Although um, um, Micah would, would cause it to be a little bit elongated. Um, all right. Through. We have um, nine questions tonight. Let's have a look at them. Um, and this one is from Ammon. Oh, Ammon Johns. Um, it's tight. And that doesn't look like Ammon. Doesn't look um, like Ammon. And Ammon is magically uh, answering himself further down. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, anyway, this one's titled Keyword Competition and Volume. Um, and um, as Evans alias uh, said, uh, should I go with keywords uh, with high search volumes, but also higher competition or with, a, with less competition and search volumes? Um, on the screen. Keywords with... Um high competition are going to be um, generally a lot of work to rank for um, unless you've got the, the time and the budget. Um, they're something to fantasize over, not actually aim for. I would say they <laughs> Wow. Wow. Star Wars. What was I saying? <laughs> did, did I go all Dalek or something? Woo! <laughs> now, is that, is that going okay? Yeah, that, that voided. All right. Um, you, you with us, David? Yeah, I am. I was just saying that... Uh, that, that um, High competition, high search volume keywords are a fantasy rather than something you should actually be aiming for. Um, the, the other I think thing you're sharing the wrong window, with... Jim. Sorry, yeah. David. Okay. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Too much. I, I, I can lose myself very easily. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes, I was saying exterminate. Yes. <laughs> exterminate the old guy in Australia, is that? <laughs> Stop presenting. <laughs> right, now let's try now. Um, 
But, uh, no, that's not it. Oh dear. So I'm sorry about this, guys. That's okay. We know you run on Windows. Uh, now this is going to go crashing down, I think. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank, thank, thank you, Google. Thank you very, very freaking much. Um, okay. Might actually work pretty well with some music on that next time. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a little techno y. There we go. Oh, no nosebleed techno while it's going, though. All right. Okay. Can I go now? You go ahead. <laughs> um, right. I think, well, the, within the, the, uh, within the, uh, the question, um, then we, the, the answer is, Keywords with high search volumes and high competition are going to be uh, a bad thing because you're going to have to struggle to, to rank for them. But those aren't really the questions. Um, so the you have to answer the questions about who are you selling to, who's going to read the site, who's going to read the copy. Um, and you need to understand that before you start looking for, for keywords. Um, because you can find all sorts of... Oh, have I stopped? My video has stopped. No, Am I still there? <laughs> you're, you're, I can still hit, see your, your, your um, speech. I can hear ah. you. Ah. My, my video has stopped. <laughs> no, you need to understand who you're writing for, who, who you're trying to sell to, before you start analysing keywords, looking for keywords. And then you, you want ones that have good fit, um, will likely lead you to some sales. Uh, and then don't go for the ones with the huge, uh, the huge traffic numbers and the, uh, the high keyword competition. I'm going to stop because, ah, I've come back again. <laughs> oh, dear. So I'm glad you heard me. I don't know if I made any sense at all in, in that whilst I was talking in all the distractions but yeah don't don't get to ask asking those questions until you've determined who you're writing for the other thing which i i mentioned um also which a lot of people forget to take into account is when you're given a volume um the it's estimated that I think first first position mm -hmm. is thirty three percent, or you can expect, let's say, if you're position one, thirty three percent um, of that kind of volume, and then it moves down by each position, like up to five. Um, so even if you're position one chasing that kind of volume, you should still work into it that you're only going to be looking at roughly thirty three percent. But that, of course, and it all depends on what's going on in the time. Like, you know, you might be looking at an average sort of volume on um, something which is seasonal, for example. And then come winter, that is just not even going to happen. So, like, yeah, sure, you can look at these things, but there's quite a lot of other factors you need to take into account. And the other, the other thing, I, I guess, is is what the hell Google is doing to the particular uh, results page you turn up on. How much other clutter is pushing down that uh, position one um, this week, according to what uh, Google is doing with it. 
So oh yeah, totally. If it's a shopping query, you've got shopping carousel above. If it's a local query, you've got local services potentially above that. Then you've got ads. Then you've got your your local pack. <laughs> it all depends on the query, also. You know that can be like quite a yeah. Uh, Jim, Jim, don't search the image of that. Like <laughs> really? Why not? Yeah, because you're gonna like you don't want to mess with your screen share, mate. No, horrible things happen. <laughs> Because you know it, all of a sudden we'll be break dancing. No. We'll be break dancing again. We'll be like, ah. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out who who, who was um, um, emulating um, the inimitable um, Evan Johns. Um, anyway, we move on to the next. I'm recording that as a yes. Um, Beck Graben asked the question, should we switch to a dot .com? Um, Beck said, hey, guys, um, if we have a, a domain authority of 17 with a dot .studio website uh, and we are about to do a pretty solid organic uh, search engine optimization overhaul, should we switch to a dot .com domain instead of continuing to use a dot .studio? Hey, 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 Beck, mate, right. So DA is a metric created by tools which have no understanding of Google. You know, they've got no insider insight. It's just what they think it's based on. Next, if Dot Studio is working for you and it makes perfect sense for it, I mean, I've got a gym client, uh, a gym, a series of gyms on Dot Fit, and they are flying. It's got nothing to do with the the you know what you're using. It's how you it's how you're using it, how you're building it. You know, I mean, if you're a freaking studio and you think, and it's like you, the name of your photography studio is One Studio. One dot studio is flipping awesome, right? But it's what you do with it. It's not whether you're on a dot com or you know. Yeah, if if you're in, if you're expecting um, a higher DA um, by switching to a dot com, then you're going to be disappointed, unless the uh, unless the tool is set up wrongly. To, to get yeah, higher yeah, DA like to the like. How do you even know? Like the tool, they could have, they could have, like when they programmed it or created it, they may have just added in things which haven't even encountered a dot studio yet. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, this is a man made tool. Speak to the tool makers, tell them to tweak it for dot studio, and boom, you'll have a DA of like 29. And then it's like overnight. And it's like, and then you'll see how ridiculous relying on these, the, these metrics are. Okay. Any more for this one? Right. Number three on our run list is from Chris Brook. Um, it's titled Local SEO, especially with regards to images. Chris said, hi, everyone. I have spent the last year attempting to teach myself search engine optimization for my photography website. But I've hit a wall when it comes to local SEO, especially with regards to images. The main problem is um, uh, every other photography website I look at has uh, something different or nothing at all for image uh, SEO or SEO in general. And I have no idea if what I'm doing is helping or hurting. I say this because even after allowing Google to crawl my website for months, without touching it, I seem to remain squarely where I am uh, where I'm at with uh, near stagnant web traffic. I've tried to describe what is in the image and copy what the title is to the image URL methods, but neither seem to improve my situation. Even when I had paragraphs full of organic keywords on my front page, nothing seemed to help. Any advice would be appreciated. Note I'm near a city, um, but ha have been trying to focus my uh, search engine optimization to my local area so uh, I uh, do not get buried under 
tons of city photographs. Okay, so your photos aren't necessarily going to be doing anything for you in that sense. They may for longer queried stuff. Okay, so forget in terms of actually appearing based upon your images in that sense. If you're a local photographer, and let's just say you do weddings, for example, so and you're based in a city, your homepage is going to be, you know, Chris Brook Photography, um, XYZ City. Okay, then you're going to provide service pages. It's going to be um, uh, wedding photography, wedding photography by Chris Brook in XYZ. Okay, um, and the, you know, obviously, you're going to provide a couple of images on that for them to get a flavour. But you, you know, to get a flavour of things. The, the better way in terms of local SEO that I think from using your images as a resource firstly if you're allowed to use them would be to be create um uh, a works page out my work or my my photography page or if you want to call it and then split it down into like if you're a local photographer and let's say you do weddings you typically would probably be doing the same kind of areas uh in a year like you know I'd, I'd, let's say for example you do xyz hotel you do this location like um, uh, this this location you're doing that location and then create a page for that uh, wedding photography at Hambleton Hall right um, and then create different little you know like little images so this was Debbie and Carl's wedding at Hamilton Hall November 2021 um and also provide a bit of detail because not every package is the same so debbie and carl wanted the the ceremony the da -da -da, and they wanted a very evening like just mingle around kind of photography and then a selection of those images they're going to be wedding photography at hamilton hall debbie and carl's wedding or whatever and 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 that's how you're going to do it anyone searching for hamilton hall photographer you're going to start appearing organically People typically don't wake up in the morning where they are and go, hey, I want a wedding photographer. They will do a lot of research around wedding photography. And like, I don't know if you do wedding photography, like whatever you do, people do a lot of research when they're deciding on this. Um, and you want to be appearing in those kind of things. Like if, for example, weddings, they're going to look at a venue first before they even, once they've got a venue, that's when they only start looking at photographer. And then it makes sense for them to start looking at the venue plus per photographer in terms of search queries rather than just wedding photographer XYZ city. Uh, and so one idea for you is look at creating venue pages. And because I'm assuming that you work with these regularly throughout a year in a location. Um, that, that, that could be certainly an idea on that. Um, but your images, yeah, look, the image, if it's for your wedding page and it's your wedding page, landing page, it would be, um, black and white image, uh, groom, November, you, you know what I mean? Just describe the image, um, in, in that sense. So images aren't really necessarily going to make or break anything, but you could use them, especially in project or location pages where you have worked. Um, so that's an idea. Thank you, Tim. I was just thinking, you know, uh, um, that insight of, um, you know, what, what people do when they're first searching and that their, their first focus is on a venue. So maybe a, a wedding photographer should uh, do a deal with wedding ven venues in his area. Um, to put in spotlighting or permanent lighting or you know shot shot um, scenes um, and uh, offer them five percent of his income and you probably find uh, that um, venues would would jump at that they they'll feel honest about it because it, it's to uh, allow a specific lighting to be up in a certain place. Um, and uh, pick up a five percent commission on, on the wedding yeah um might, might be nice anyway 
Is that a bad idea, David, or a good idea? Who knows? Mute button, David. The mute button, David. Right, I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I was saying we, we do tend to get caught up in our websites rather than our businesses. Um, and I think it's a it's a good idea to take a step back sometimes and uh, and work on the business rather than the website. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, roll on to number four on our own list. It's from Natalia Tom Chishin. Um, it's titled Dividing Multiple Language Websites into Subdomains. Natalia said, Hi guys, uh, I have has any does anybody have experience um, with dividing multiple language websites into subdomains? I mean, the main website is in English and other languages each has its subdomains. Uh, the questions are, um, will there be uh, drops in traffic? Um, will it change the crawl budget for the main website? Go ahead, guys. One thing that we don't know is the current setup. So are we talking about an existing site? And I assume that's the case from the question um, that Natalia wants to, as it were, rearrange and put different languages in each subdomain. If that's the case, um, I mean, is there going to be a huge boost or benefit? Unlikely especially if it's working already. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Um, go ahead, Mr. Um, so um, as far as the crawl budget is concerned, I think Richard answered the question. It, it really wouldn't matter unless you have a really big site. So forget about crawl budget, assuming that the site isn't that huge. And then it's about drop in traffic. And I mean, any change, um, can, any change has risks associated with it. So if you have a functioning site, then the question is, does it really make sense to, to do that reorganization? So the question I would ask is, what exactly do you think you would achieve by putting different languages in different subdomains instead of, say, subdirectories? OK. Well, yeah. I, I yeah. know there's enough uh, background here to give a, a, a proper um, and useful answer to this. But um, I'm not, I'm never in favour of messing about with a website just because there's, uh, you've read somewhere that this is a good idea. Um, I'm, I, I hope I'm wrong, but this does smell of, I read this somewhere, um, shall I check that it's a good idea? And I, I, I just, I tend to shudder when there's thoughts of, moving to dot coms as we've had earlier um and you know doing something uh to the to the website in the hope that the the content will be uh miraculously work better um if the site is crawlable and you haven't done anything god awful with your uh with your website um making tweaks won't really give you the uh the 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 the, uh, the the advances that you're looking for, he says in very broad brushstrokes. But there we go. Thank you, David. Any more on this one? Okay. 
Number five on our run list is from Alexa Han. Um, asked, how do I protect my site from spam, spammy backlinks? Uh, Alexa said, I have a new site I'm working um, on. Uh, I've never bought a backlinks for it, yet today I saw that there's a whole bunch of super spammy uh, inbound links which have resulted in a penalty uh, from Google. One, how do I find out who or where these backlinks are coming from? I mean, I know the website names, but I did not purchase uh, uh, any uh, backlinks or uh, make them myself. I've got um, a random 100 inbound links. How do I find out who did this or is it just random spam? And two, how do I protect my site from getting attacked like this? Uh, is there a software slash tool I can download? Can anyone just spam someone else's site for the sole purpose of lowering their rankings? Yes, they can. Uh, three, can I appeal to Google? The site is new and apparently you might get uh, shadow banned for three months. How do I rectify this issue? Get yourself a lightsaber. It's very good. <laughs> No, um, it depends. You say that you've been uh, penalised by Google somewhere here. Has resulted in a penalty from Google. Have you had, um, have you had something in Google Search Console to say that you've had a, a manual penalty, or are you just surmising that because your traffic from from your website or to your website? You better if I got it right, wouldn't it? To your website has gone down, but you've had a penalty. Um, you know, just because you've found some uh, some some low quality backlinks, shall we say, um, and your um, and your traffic has gone down, it doesn't mean this influences that. There could be all sorts of reasons. Um, and then the other question is. Um, what how do you define spam backlinks there are lots of uh, lots of tools that will that will help you identify uh, bad quality backlinks but um unless unless google thinks you've been buying tons of them um google will probably just ignore them um so sweating about low quality backlinks um your uh, you're probably not it's probably not worth doing so um so i would start looking for other reasons your uh your um your traffic has gone down i'm presuming that your traffic has gone down or else you wouldn't be looking for low quality backlinks um if your traffic hasn't gone down just carry on doing what you're doing and don't start worrying about building uh building links just get on with some good quality content yeah i mean it's un it's unclear what um is meant by penalty from google because amon johns as in the screen asks whether um there's a notification or not and that question remained unanswered as far as i can see so it is i think an assumption that's been made and i agree with michael martinez who answers the question below in that and what and, and david in that it's probably something you can ignore if you really think they're spammy disavow them jim's favorite tool and leave it at that yeah thanks mister yep all right, I think we've covered this, um, but um, look, a, a couple of things for, for Alexa. A hundred links aren't going to do anything either way. Um, you've got nothing to fear from a hundred links. Um, and especially if, if Google hasn't notified you about a penalty, um, then it, it, you could be reasonably assured that you don't have a penalty. Um, yeah, that's all. Um, I can't go on without thanking um, people like Emin Johns and uh, George Georgiatis. Uh, um, Emin Johns wouldn't be there today because he'll be down at uh, 
Brighton at um, the, the Brighton SEO. Um, but yeah, the, the, the job that, that people do, uh, yeah, Stockbridge, Truslow, and uh, others um, answering questions through the week. Michael Martinez, Brenda Malone, um, the, the uh, input uh, that uh, people put into the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group to give people answers uh, as, as they ask them. Uh, and make uh, Dumb SEO Questions such a valuable resource. Um, you know, our thanks uh, uh, fondly said. All right, this one's from David Gassage. Um, will I get the same rankings again? Probably not. Um, David said, hi, guys. I have a feeling that my question is really dumb, but it bothers me a lot. So the thing is next, the, 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 the bunch of articles... Uh, were deleted and um, links were given redirects. Um, will I get the same rankings if I publish them again under the same slugs? Um, let me see if there's a little bit more. Yes, yes, yes thanks, uh, David said. Um. Right, I'm assuming these have been 301 at some stage um, as, as a permanent redirect. Um, I suspect it might take a bit of time for Google to figure out um, that those have been removed. Um, you've told you've told Google that these have gone and to permanently redirect to somewhere else. Um, so, in some ways, there's no reason for Google to to reassess these. They've, you've just told told them that they've, that they've been permanently moved. Um, however, you you may find that after some time, Google does get round to uh, to re uh, reassessing uh, what's going on there. But you know, the main thing is it's a it's a permanent redirect. Thank you, David. Yeah, I think <laughs> I agree with uh, Richard's answer. It depends. And the only way to find out is actually doing it and see what happens. Um, I think the complicating factor is the redirect. Because were you redirecting to, this, to the essentially the same piece at another place? Or were you redirecting to something that wasn't quite the same thing, like redirecting a homepage, sort of, as it were, improper use of 301, if that makes sense. Um, so, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to know what the differences would be if you actually fall forward it and then put it back up again, and then 301ing it, because this is a 301 question rather than a 404 question, isn't it? Google has a pretty long memory, so if the same thing comes back and Google recognizes as such, then I think Stockbridge Trussell is right. I think it would be it would go back to the place where it was before. Um, But would that actually happen? Because situations always change, the environment always changes. So it's really hard to say. Okay. And of course we think... Um, um... The, sorry, the, the question that, that's just sprung to my mind uh, just to prove it's still awake, um, is that um, I wonder what would happen if you just publish them again under a different URL. Google presumably liked them before. They've been 301, presumably. So Google has forgotten what was on there. So I wonder what would happen if you just republish them on a different URL. 
But if you're going to do that, why don't we publish it on the same URL? <laughs> well, because you've got a 301 redirect on it. Well, you can remove the 301 and you know, respond to 200. <laughs> but, you know, if, if, you, if you publish it somewhere else, then you don't have to worry what effect the 301 will or will not have. Well, I suppose the argument then is that if you have links pointing it, um, uh, okay, okay. You know, you'd yeah, rather have it directly it. rather than have it mediated yeah. by three or one. I suppose of that's course. the argument. Yeah. I was just thinking of, of it from a content point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and and the, the answer to to the unasked question, Google never forgets. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Is that, is that why it's the elephant in the room? <laughs> um, oh, look, I also must point out uh, we've, we've got um, in that last uh, question, uh, uh, Natalia uh, um, was um, not mentioned and uh, as, as the uh, asker of the question, and um, David Gassange who responded to the question, uh, his name appeared up there. This is because uh, uh, Facebook, um, uh, keeping our, our scraper going uh, um, and with um, um, Facebook's uh, constant machinations, um, it's, it's, a, it's a hard task and uh, um, no doubt that Dan will learn, notice this and, and fix it um, by next week. But if, if we're not perfect, we do our best. Um, all right. Um, this is number seven on our run list. Um, Arpit Sony uh, said uh, it's titled Your Journey with Search Engine Optimization in Your Beginning Days. Um, since my total spent hours with um, SEO is not a couple of hundred hours yet. I feel like getting lost by doing everything on my own, excluding backlinks. Uh, I have a virtual assistant for that. Uh, please share your own experience. How is your journey going forward with SEO um, in your uh, beginning days? Well, my beginning days were right back when the internet uh, ran on steam, uh, as Jim will tell you. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's it's rather more difficult now than in my younger days. But the thing to do is read quality stuff about the about SEO. Um, Try not to look for shortcuts. If you see shortcuts, they are almost certainly going to drop you in it. Um, so read good stuff. Um, find find experts uh, and read them. Uh, and then try out. Try out what you're try out what you've learned. Um, do it. Put it up on your website measure it see how it performs learn some more do some more go back to what you published the first time and try and improve it with what you've learned it's just a, a, a shall i say a treadmill <laughs> seo learning is a treadmill uh, start here and continue uh walking or running um because it ain't gonna stop um so yes um just do things that are sensible. Don't do things that uh, that appear to be too good to be true, um, and measure the effect, and then change, and add. Are you you're off, uh, Jim? You're. Uh, your microphone. Okay, run list. Um, thanks, uh, David. Um, number eight in the run list is um, a question from Deepak Kumar Pell. Um, it's titled, The Best Way to Do Keyword Research for a New Website. 
Um, I still think people put the, the, the cart before the horse. Uh, the, the, they um, want to, to um, um, build build a site um, for keywords rather than build a site for the products that they have on the site for sale. Anyway. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I fall somewhere in between here, I think, Jim. Um, keyword research. The, the question is, where is the start point for, for Deepak? Um, has he already determined who his, uh, uh, who his audience are, who his customers are? Um, does he uh, know... Um, does he know and understand how those people interact with these products or services? Um, once he's he's done that and he's worked out the most sensible way to to present them, um, may, may, maybe the keyword research um, should be done first. I, I, I I'm an adherent of uh, of doing keyword research very early on uh, in a, in a new websites. Um, um, Genesis, shall we say? Um, it, it, it's just a case of um, understanding your your. It's just. It's a case of understanding your customers, understanding your products or services, and then uh, going to see how that manifest manifests within the search environment. And that's where your key phrase, uh, keyword, key phrase research um, comes in. Um, and the times I've seen um, businesses that are absolutely convinced they know how uh, how their customers uh, interact with their website, with their products via the website, um, and they put up loads of content that just doesn't actually bring any search uh, search traffic in. Um, you've you've got to understand a bit about uh, what your uh, uh, about what people are actually looking for. Um, unless you're a very, very small niche kind of um, site where you may be able to get away with being very, very long tail in your targeting. But I think uh, keyword research is, is, um, is very important. So how do you do it? Um, I, I use paid for tools. Um, uh, I use something like SEMrush, but there are lots of other things around out there. Um, I do I do like doing the numbers. I do like getting lots of searches. I like looking at them. I like seeing if they're, um, if they're relevant, if they're likely to bring business in, what the searcher intent is, or are they just being searched for by, by some student who's been given a project on, on digital marketing? And it's amazing how many uh, searches that come up in research are just useless. They're not ever going to bring business in. Um, so understand where you're going before you do the numbers. And then you can throw out lots and lots of the stuff because it's not going to be relevant and it's not going to bring business in. Uh, your microphone's off again, Jim. Yes. Uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm, you'd, you'd think after 424 episodes, I'd have a clue, wouldn't you? Oh, ah, well. Okay, let's um, we'll roll on to number nine. Evan Johns. Um, uh, what, uh, again, uh, Ammon didn't ask this question. Uh, Ammon uh, probably um, um, uh, uh, answered one, one, one of the uh, questions or previous questions. The, the, the problem is with our uh, scraper. Um, and um, so we, without, without going to the WCA questions Facebook group, uh, we won't know who. Uh, actually asked this question. 
Um, and we'll work to fix um, our scraper um, so that we get our details better. Um, anyway, what kind of site do I build to a practice uh, SEO, content-based or affiliate? Well, they're kind of two different things. An affiliate is also going to be content-based. Uh, so, like, and they're chalk and cheese, two different things. You know, like a content-based site, I don't know whether you pick tech or, I don't know, books, whatever. But affiliate is products and content around the product to try and flog the product to an affiliate. Do you know what I mean? Um, the, what do you want to do? Like, like uh, surely you must be in some kind of field, um, you know, uh, or, or like, you know, are you in e-com? Well, then build affiliate. Are you in, what kind of field are you in now? I mean, if you want to practice it, I'm guessing you kind of want to start working in SEO. Um, what kind of field do you want to branch out into? Like, what are your current, like, what's your current job? Like, what do you work on? And then that's what I would probably base my, base my, you know, play site with. Um, yeah. I would say that um, an affiliate site is um, a content-based <laughs> site plus lots of other things to do because you can't avoid creating content hmm. um, even if you're going to spend a load of money on uh, on google ads or something um, you still need content for for landing pages so if you want to practice i would say go for a content based site don't don't add the added complexity of an affiliate site um, you know, if you just want to practice and you haven't got any real ideas of wanting to, any goals of wanting to make any money out of it, then um, go for a content-based site. Don't, don't, just don't cause yourself any more pain. And the other thing is, um, if it's to practice, don't think you can practice for a month, two months, three months. This is a commitment and you need to find something that you're going to be able to continue that commitment, putting up content, measuring, researching, looking at, uh, at Google analytics. Um, it's yeah. A, a kind of practice site is, is something that, uh, may not, uh, may not stay the distance because, if it's something that you haven't got any passion for, then uh, you'll find it very, very difficult to to do this. Yeah. Okay. Now, when I click this button, I'm fairly sure I know what I'll see. Yep. It's thank you for watching time. Um, we've answered all of the questions asked uh, or many of the questions asked, I should say, because we've had a bit of a, an, a hiatus um, where the team was let down by me and we weren't able to record. Um, but um, hopefully we'll be right as rain from now on. Um, I can't go without thanking people like um, Brenda Malone, um, Michael Martinez, Richard Hearn, um, and people that answer questions um, throughout the week, as soon as, almost as soon as that they are asked on, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group and they make it such a, a valuable resource. Um, yeah, um, I, I thank you guys too, to Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa, David Roseanne, Michael Fisher, Kirshner, Richard Hearn, um, that make turn up week after week, uh, year after year, um, and, and make um, our recordings so uh, valuable. All right, that is, uh, I don't, don't know how this is going to stop because 
who knows what Google has done to me this time. Um, anyway, yep, I think that's it.